Hi everyone, Amy here. Welcome back to my channel, Paper Therapy with Amy. And here is the start of my layout. I'm gonna give try and give you some tips today. So one of the tips I have today is this is pebble paper. It's gone off the clearance rack, but it was there for $8 for 24 sheets. It's a steal of a deal. Um, it's a gray. Gray works in the background of almost any layout. So I bought two packs because I love to start on gray rather than white. So that's one tip, the first tip that I'm gonna give you. So I wanna show you, um, and also today I wanna to give you a bunch of tips on scrapbooking busy pictures. I went to a little class where we all made these, now what would you call these? These um, Dr. Seuss, trees help me out folks i know you're yelling it at your thing it'll come to me in a minute anyways the grinch grinch trees so um it was fun to do but these are very very busy pictures because there's so many colors in them there's so many people we were in this little shop and there was a lot going on in there and look at those gnomes so cute anyway um because of that um I decided I was gonna try something with my pictures. So for example, I'll just take these two uh, and this one actually, okay? So I wanted to use this gnome sheet for sure and it's okay, it's fine. But what about if I would make these pictures either black and white or just desaturate the color enough that there's just a hint of color. So here is this picture desaturated almost all the way but the greenery is still kind of green i tried black and white but it still looked a bit busy because then there was so many shades of black and white it was hard to see us all but this kind of gives our skin a bit of pinkness so maybe you don't like it but i really like it so i'm going to show you a comparison of each of these okay let's compare these look at that that red that distracting red is just toned right down and you can still see all those little gnomes in fact, their white beards show up more in my mind. Okay, so there's that. Um, let's do that. Okay, and then this one I shrank down. That's the other beauty of having my own machine, or machine, um, printer. I don't know why I called it a machine. It is a printing machine. Anyways, um, the beauty of that is that you can shrink pictures down. So these are the two main pictures that I made big and the rest of them I've made smaller and what's nice about that is if I tried to squeeze all these full-size pictures onto the page then I'm not going to be able to squeeze them all on or I'm not going to be able to have much embellishments so printing them at a three by four is awesome I really like a three by four size so here is um all my pictures so when you're scrapbooking busy photos, my number one tip is gonna be, and not number one as in the best, but the first one I'm giving you today is try desaturating or making the photos in black and white or sepia. But I really like this desaturation. It gives them a hint of color. They still, our skin has color. We show up nicely on them, but they aren't fully black and white. So I've turned down the saturation down to maybe 20%. And I'll, if you'd like a video on me making, doing that, how I do that, uh, let me know in the comments and I'll work on a video for doing that. Okay, so I have not yet come up with how I'm gonna lay these out, but I do know that I wanna have some of this gnome paper. And I think I've shown you before a hint where you can do a strip on the top or on the bottom of a printed paper so you get to see it and admire it. But at the same time, it's not behind your photos making everything feel so much more busy. This is my start. I'm start with them on top. I think I like them up there. I think I might want them narrower than that, but for now we're gonna leave that, okay. So I have this gnome and these gnomes, and I think I want them on separate pages. So maybe I'll put him on this side and these guys on this side. And you know, I like to group the photos to the middle so that the page is, I'm thinking of it, of it like 
24 by 12. So I like to do that. I don't like that there's two pictures of me where I look so much alike in both. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that one over there. And I think this little hedgehog should come over here. Let's try that. This is the group shot of everybody. Um, I wonder if the group shot should be up here. I don't, I was purposely not doing that. So I guess we're gonna switch things out a little bit. I only have a couple landscape photos. So how about we put this one here, but then I'm here and here. See that? I don't love that either. So let's see, I might be able to fix that. Now is that my face is like right there and there. So it could go like this. I don't love having a taller picture to the side there. So let's try like this. I'll do some embellishing and kind of um, break these two apart a little bit. So I'm gonna cut a few sapphire mats quickly. Um, I believe this is my scrap bin where I color code my scraps so I can look and see if I have any and look at that. And then this way we'll go three and a quarter. Okay. There's that one. And I might put something here to hide a little bit of this stuff. I wanted this here because this is my gnomes that I made last year. They were very fun to make. Um, now I have this one here. And I think I can cut a little bit off this one um, to make it work on here because it's just above our heads. So I'm gonna do that. And then I'm gonna definitely have so many of these. May as well utilize them. Okay, so we're gonna take a teeny bit off there and then we'll go. So tip number two, when you're working with busy photos to tone them down a bit, match your photos. So tip number one is change the color of your photos to black and white sepia or just take a lot of the color out of them to take away the distracting background colors. And tip number two is matte your photos because it really makes them pop out and seem less busy. So I've cut down the gnome paper at the top of the page to two inches wide. Tip number three is don't use your busy patterns behind your busy photos. Try to separate them. So you see how I'm making a separation? This one can go here. This picture isn't that busy. So that is tip number three. To define the end of the pattern paper, like the edge, I'm going to add uh, quarter inch strips of sapphire. Tip number four is zoom in on your photos because if you look at some of these photos, if you see this one here, how busy it looks. But when you, we've zoomed in, I've taken off this pink on the side here and yes, I've taken off some of my ear, but you can just see the gnomes in the back and some bags it's a lot less busy if you zoom in on your photos and you're still seeing what you want to see. So also this photo is just a zoom bin version of this guy here, but because it's kind of a theme I was going for and I didn't know, know that when I took the photos, but I just decided uh, I had another photo from a different angle of this um, gnome tree. And I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna, um, zoom in on this one guy so you can really focus on him instead of seeing the whole tree. So this is the idea that the whole tree is decorated. This one is a particular gnome. And this one here too, it helps quiet down the page because it's not such a busy picture. If they were all like these three, it's a lot. The sticker sheet has this swirly little border 
uh, sticker that kind of looks like it makes a nice ending to the patterned paper. So I'm placing that there and then breaking up the line that you see between them with this piece of blue sapphire. Last year we had the four seasons paper packs and I still have quite a lot of the winter one. It was my favorite left. Um, and I found that I wanted to have a little red on here because I want it to look more festive. So this um, little um, banner here or strip, it says things about friends and holidays and hot chocolate and that sort of thing. So I thought this was perfect for this little spot. And I've got that blue under there. I just left it underneath. Ooh, I have some more and I would wanted to put some hearts on and there is some, I think it brings out the color in our face and stuff like that kind of too. I have a really fun title for this page. I may put something along the bottom, but I may just leave it. I'm going to try and anchor things down a bit with the embellishments clusters and the titles. So I've got some gold in here. I'm not sure if I'm going to use gold, but I, I did kind of I wondered if I should. I thought it might look nice. So I've got some of these trees because there's triangle trees in the background here, but I also cut a few of these trees because they are more like the other trees. So I was going to see if they would be combined and if they would look okay together. And then I have a really fun title. I also have um, a little gnome. I don't think this gnome's, no, it's a long, it's an old gnome stamp set. This guy, if I could pick him up. And I colored him in all cute so he'd match my page. It's this gnome stamp set here. So it's not really for Christmas, but I think he looks good for Christmas or anytime. So I used Irresistible's cardstock and it kind of stained the white parts lighter blue. So I may just uh, switch it for blue or sapphire cardstock, but I'll just try them out for now. And here is the word gnomies. Do you know where I'm going with this title? And I Googled this. I did not come up with it myself. The title will be Hanging With My Nomies. So I'm gonna stamp right on the background for Hanging With My, and I'm gonna use this stamp set. I don't think you can get it anymore, but I will link it if you can. I'm pretty sure you can't. Um, and I think, what color should I stamp in? Mm, I've been using Juniper on this page quite a lot, so I could stamp in Juniper. So if you look on here, these letters are about an inch tall. What we're gonna do is we're gonna set this ruler so here. When I'm stamping, I don't wanna take any chances when I'm stamping right on my layout. So I'm gonna go there. And then I want the distance to be the same again. So, but the letters are at least an inch high. So we're gonna go down to the five. Here we go, and I can erase that later. Come off there, we're gonna flip to this side. Now I got my line, so it doesn't matter if this is on here perfectly straight. Let's move this aside and get this centered. I'm gonna move this right down so I can get over it. And I think I'm gonna go with the juniper, which would be the same as the um, jade. Very similar. I don't have the letter N twice. I do have the letter N. I don't have it twice. So I will be stamping the second one um, in there afterwards. I just leave the gap. I, I put it here and then I move it to this spot just so I know I have the exact right size gap. All right, now I'm gonna get over it. Perfect, really happy with that. Ink it up. Hanging. So I went with my here. Through the magic of video editing, I finished my title and now I am going to be starting my embellishment process. These half scallop circles are from an older stamp set and I pre-stamped a whole bunch of embellishments so that the video wouldn't be quite so long. So if you want to know how I made these embellishments, I do have on Instagram a little video of how I make the triangle trees or how I made them for a different layout. And it's a similar process. And I do not have a video of coloring uh, the little gnome, but 
Uh, there's lots of people who have videos of coloring out there and they're probably a little more talented than me. I can tell you that I use the Vintage Blue Blend to color his hat and jacket, I think. And I used earth brown and I think a gray brown and a fair skin to do the rest of the gnome. I did leave in some of my indecisiveness on this embellishment process. It sometimes takes me a little while to kind of get into the groove and figure out how much I want on each side uh, when I'm embellishing in this style. So um, I think the one embellishment cluster is kind of part and parcel with the title. It's just going down the left side there. And then I'm doing one on the bottom right and one on the top right. That gives me kind of my triangle. For the plaid trees, I used the Irresistibles cardstock. Uh, I think it's still available, but it's the previous one to the one we have now. And then I inked up with um, mist with a little blender brush and I cut them out with the triangle trees, um, little thin cuts. Okay, I it is actually the next morning. So sometimes it takes me over a day. I had to do so much prep work for this layout that that kind of took me a lot of time and I was losing light for filming. But um, I'm gonna use the Barely Art glue a lot of times. Um, I'll just glue things down with tape runner kind of semi-permanent so I can change it if I want to end up moving it down or up in these two so that's why this is such handy glue because now I can go around and just stick things down the rest of the way let's go right to the tip there and then um, you can even just throw a block on top of there to just weigh that down for a bit And then all these letters. So I have one more tip and I didn't really do it on this layout. For busy photos, another really good tip is consider a grid style layout. So I'm gonna bring in another layout I did here to, um, to illustrate my point of the grid style layout. These are pretty eclectic photos. There's different photos of my husband and I around Denver, Colorado. And this is your uh, grid style layout. You could do um, nine. I've done just uh, five on this side and six on, oh, I guess five on this side as well because this is a decoration or embellishment cluster. So this is, I would call this a grid style layout and the grid style really settles down um, when you have a lot of stuff going on. I find it really because it's very organized, it kind of settles down how busy it is. So that is my sixth um, tip. So let's quickly go over my six tips for scrapbooking busy photos. Tip number one was desaturate photos. Tip number two was use mats. Tip number three was separate your busy pattern from your busy photos. Tip number four was zoom in to certain things, elements on your photos instead of having all the background. You don't always need all the busy background. Uh, tip number five was cardstock behind the photos, both in the mats, but also in whatever's behind. If the photos are busy, you don't need busy paper behind there. And um, tip number six, that's six, was use a grid style pattern as I did in this layout over here. So those were my tips. A big thank you to everyone who stopped by my channel today. I appreciate all of you so much. Leave me a comment on what your tips are for scrapbooking busy photos and if I was helpful. And also, I would just love it if you would subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so yet and hit that like button so YouTube knows that uh, you're enjoying this content. Thanks so much for watching and have a wonderful rest of your day and your weekend. Bye!